you are a regular attender at Autumn Hill United Methodist Church, you should have received an email with a service folder containing all the information you usually have in front of you in a survey. If you are not receiving, would like to receive an email and information from the church, please contact us. Most of the hymns are found in the United Methodist Hymnal from the 19th. I am available for visits via the phone. Please call or needs, concerns, or just would like to talk. You may send prayer requests to email to my email or by call. At this time, all regular meetings are canceled until the governor decides otherwise. Come back together to worship as the governor gives guidelines for ending the at home order and we move into the emergency order. Watch for information. If you know a person that is home without internet access, this would be a great time to check in on them. They are more cut off from the information stream than the rest. Bill Carlson are making mass, and if anyone would want to contact them, see the email that was sent out the week with their phone number and arrange pickup time. Let us come together to worship the risen Christ. Call to worship followed by our opening hymn. Now the green blade to be hymn number three. The risen Lord is among us. Put aside uncertainty. Put aside mistrust. Do not doubt, but believe. Join me for the opening prayer. Blessed yes. God, who is the Paschal Mystery, establish the new covenant of reconciliation. Grant that born or reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. stood up with the eleven and raised his voice and addressed the crowd. 
this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by God did among you through him. As you yourselves know, handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. I also will rest in hope, because you will to the realms of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that would place one of his descendants on his Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the rest. He was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body. God has raised this Jesus of Nazareth to life of this. Our psalm today is Psalm 16, verse 5 through 11, found in hymnal 748. Please join me as we read antiphonally. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen in places. I have a glorious heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord away for me. The Lord is my right hand. Shall not be moved. My heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My body also give up to Shalom. Let the God one see the pit. You show me the path of life. Your presence, there is fullness. Your right hand, there are pleasures of is taken from 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 to 9. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, and by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice. Not for a little while, you may have to suffer grief in all kinds. These have come so that, they, that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. I'm sorry. Though you have not seen him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him, are filled with the inexplicable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Thank you. 
this morning is taken from John chapter 29. When the disciples were together with the door leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he, he showed them his hands and his side, the disciples were over be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you, that he breathed on them the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sin, their sin is forgiven. They are not forgiven. Also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers with where the nails were and put my hand aside, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Doors were locked. Jesus came and stood amongst them and said, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have miracles, which are not recorded in this book, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life the word of the Lord. Stop believing, or stop doubting and start. Far too often we give Thomas a bad name. We refer to him as, but the reality is, I see Thomas as one of the people who are real, who is authentic, is believing. And just because we read in the scripture that Thomas had doubts, do not realize that doubt is a normal disciples were there at the house. It was the first day of the week. And for us to put this in context, it was Easter Sunday. They were there and the disciples were there and Jesus appeared to them. But the scripture made it quite clear in <coughs> verse 19. On the first first were locked for fear. On Friday and he was buried he was in the grave three days later they were still afraid and they were afraid that they 
like Jesus and may be killed. But as mentioned before, right, that fear is really false. The likelihood of the Jewish leaders arresting the disciples on the zero. They already killed Jesus, the leader, and they figured once you kill the leader, scatter. There was no need for the disciples to be afraid, but yet they were afraid of what the Jews might do. They were hiding behind locked doors. Fear, doubt, and worry does indeed affect us. But the scripture made it quite clear that one of the twelve disciples named Thomas was not there. Not there. He doubted that what he told them was true. Amen. Unless I personally see with my own eyes, my own hands, I will not believe. I agree with Thomas in so many ways because let's be realistic. Don't we live through our senses? Don't we personally see certain things? We might not believe that we actually touch it. Especially today with augmented reality and stuff. Unless we actually see that it's a solid object. But yet at the same time, we have to agree that there are so many things that we believe and know to be reality. I haven't seen it, touched it, tasted it, smelt it, or heard it. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I is that we believe more things that we have not seen touched. I think about the coronavirus. How many of us believe there's something that we cannot see with our physical eyes? I know I can, but yet we what? Believe. Viruses exist, but even though we can't see it, I found out pretty early as a little kid that we really can. Seeing is not necessarily believing. As a little kid living in Belize, I, I lived about three blocks away from the ocean. And I would often go out and illegally, without permission, I would sneak off and go swimming, and then I'd dry off in the sun, looking at the sailboat sailing off. Then what? Fell. Obviously, that's not my over the horizon. So, see, not necessarily what believing because the eyes can what? Trick us. We're here in Father Taylor. Look to my right, I can see the railroad tracks. A teenager coming to America and seeing the railroad and, and walking on the railroad tracks and looking down the railroad, and I know tracks travel parallel. But again, my eyes, as I looked down the track, did what? Merge together. We trust our eyes. But Thomas is saying something that we hold true. Um, personally, what? See it. We do not doubt. Fear. So often, we are motivated by doubt and fear, and those Sunday, what we call Resurrection Sunday, had doubt and fear until they actually saw doubt and fear. And the scripture said, a week later, a week later, verse 26, again in the house, and the doors were what? Locked. A miracle! They still had the doors what? And were afraid because fear and doubt and worry gets hold of us. But the opposite of that is what? Faith. Too many of us do not even know what faith really is. But here's the thing faith and fear demand that you believe something. You cannot see, touch. It's your choice. Are you going to put faith or both faith and fear and worry demand that you what? Believe something. And you build up this reality. It's something that you really believe. 
My imagination sometimes got better of me, and I built up this reality because that is what I want. Believe. So both facing the question is, what do you believe? Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah? Or do you believe that Jesus is not the Christ and the Messiah? Far too often, only on our physical senses. And we don't understand that it's unseen. I believe in the coronavirus, even though I cannot see it. I believe that the earth, for example, is a sphere floating out in space, even though I have not seen it. I believe a lot of things that I cannot prove because I have not seen it, touched it, tasted it. I could go on and on and name things that we, even though we have heard. So faith is believing in the impossible. At least from our standpoint. Faith is believing in the mean. I think of so many things that today we take for granted. That once upon a time, we believed it was possible. I'm just going to give you a few examples. For example, man thought that it was impossible for a human being to run a mile. It was impossible. As a matter of fact, it was proven scientifically that if you ran that fast, you would... They came close to the four-minute mile, and it wasn't until Roger Bannister broke the four-minute that people believe that it was what? Possible. And guess what happened within a couple of months? Not one, but five people ran the four minute mile. And today, if you're in high school, you can't run four minute mile, you might as well not even get on the track. It's not good enough. For centuries, they knew that it was the tallest mountain possible for man to stand up there. Because so many people had tried before and they saw evidence that they their bodies are still up there frozen. And it was impossible because altitude that high in altitude, the air was too thin. You would die. But Hillary could Sir Edmund Hillary believed that it was possible. And once he made it to the top, within a couple of years, how many people made it? Three that Edmund Hillary made it to the top of Mount But here's the thing that most people do not understand. Everest in 1951. Guess what happened? And it wasn't until his third attempt in 1953. Since then, how many people have been to the top of the mountain? Last year, people were complaining that too many people are going. Here's the belief that it was impossible. But they knew that it was possible. And once you know that it's possible, you change your faith, negative, which is fear and doubt and worry, to knowing. And like Thomas, sometimes we want to transform or worry, or fear, or doubt into faith. We want to see and touch, but we are not living during those times. And so the scripture made it quite clear to us perform many other signs and miracles in the presence of his disciples that were not recorded. These things were written so that you may believe isn't that what faith is about? And both is something. And the question is, what do you believe? That Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, we have life. In the epistle of Peter, in chapter 1, verse 8, let me see that scripture. Though you have not, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexplicable. And so we today as Christians, even though faith, 
And just like Thomas, we need to take our and worry into faith. Sometimes doubt. But like Peter said, Lord, help me with my unbelief. The word of the Lord. Thank you to God. Christ died for our sins, was buried, and was raised on the third day, and appeared first to the women, and then to Peter and the twelve, and then to us. We believe that Jesus Christ, the Anointed One, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn of the dead, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell in the power of the Spirit, is the head of the body church and by the blood of Christ all things to God. Amen.
stay at home, and we continue to pray for all. Let us pray, followed by unison prayer of confession. Loving God, we thank you for your love, for your forgiveness, and for your acceptance. And Father, today, we put aside doubt, fear, and worry, and in faith and trust in you and your way. Far too often we are locked, doors bolted, because we fear what we cannot see but in reality we believe in a God who is able a God who created all and who continues to sustain we ask that you be with us and strengthen our faith may we truly grow in faith and realize that you protect and care for us each and every day and Father, we pray for our church as we are, but we continue to be the church because the church is not the building, but the people. And we continue to worship and pray to you even in our homes, and we continue to listen to your word, even if it's via Facebook or YouTube or the television. For we are people of faith. And Father, we pray for Georgia, Azerbaijan. We also pray Luke, for Michael, Nancy's brother, for New York City dealing with the virus, for state leaders, for national leaders, for healthcare workers, for people who are at home alone, who have lost their jobs. And we pray for a state for the we pray that we will remain safe. Silently pray for our personal request. Please join the great God of love. Like Thomas before, before us, us, we long to believe in the foundation, but so many doubts remain. Faced with the ravage of fate, love seems like a candle in the pit. We hold on to the promise of life, but death keeps hold to us still. Come to us in the midst of our doubt, that we may see Christ's glory and proclaim, I'm my God. Amen. Hear the good news. For our sins, Christ rose of life. God is merciful and forgives. Give thanks to God's steadfast love. Please join me as we sing this so sweet to trust in Jesus, 462.
has given generously to us. God's grace is freely given to us. At this time, we are abiding in our homes and worshiping together. The work of the church continues. Please remember to mail to Hale United Methodist Church, P.O. Box 124, Out of Hale, Minnesota, 56571. Let us have a prayer of thanksgiving for gracious this God. God. You are faithful, faithful and just. Through, through the resurrection of your Son, Jesus, you have, have given great grace to us all. You call us to share the word of eternal life with others, so that our joy may be complete. Light the way for us as we seek to live in fellowship with Christ. May these offerings reflect the grace of our risen we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. Holding him is God be with you until we meet again. It's found on. We hope and pray that we will be back together soon. We have hope, a risen Savior for each day. We trust that our country will, will pull through this crisis and pray for all America that it comes through this and trust with trust and faith that we do. We go with our eyes newly open. See and believe. See and believe. We go with our sorrow. God's blessing. Go forth with joy as we serve the risen Christ.